Dobrý. Prostě já ještě nemám vyexportovanou v pdf to je HTML, takže já ji vyexportuju. To je HTML. To je browser. Já ji vyexportuju během dne a přinesu ti, jo? Já budu celou dobu tady v téhle místnosti. Jo. Já, no, já už jsem ji, já už jsem ji exportoval dne, včera, ale už jsem tomu dělal nějaký ty, nějaký změny, takže... Vlastní forku. Jo, jo, jo. Jasně. Čekaj, takže, takže do, do, dobrý mám čas. Mám čas tak do 11, 20, takže tak 11, 15. Pět minut předem. Takže... Jo, jo, takže když je to do 11.20, tak mám čas tak do 11.15. Když to potom otázky, když no? Když zkrátka ukážu 10 minut, tak to znamená vlastně, že je za pět minut. Chápu. Jo, jo, jo. To je složitý. A za 10 minut je teda 11.20. Jo. Že v 11 20 20 končím a hard, hard cut, ok. Pak, pak mě odvedete se ve svědací kazovice. OK, OK, slyšíte mě? Jo. Yeah. Check, check, one, two, three. Three, two, one, go. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Lukáš Fritsch. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm a web guy, primarily, uh, working for Red Hat. Uh, and I have prepared something which concerns, uh, concerns me very much. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's something uh, which is uh, about uh, uh, evolving uh, web platform of uh, of today, and uh, this talk will be about about uh, web uh, components. Uh, I have prepared one one question for you. Uh, could you raise your hand uh, if you are a web engineer, if you are a web developer? Oh, a lot of web developers. What about the rest? You are not web developers. I think uh, it's it's quite hard. It's quite hard to uh, to uh, decide whether you are or uh, you are not because uh, it uh, it's uh, hard to tell what actually uh, web development uh, is. It can it can basically mean a lot of things. Uh, it depends on uh, in which language you are writing, uh, what framework you are using, etc. and uh, it's uh, hard to uh, distinguish, but but basically it uh, every time comes down to uh, to some uh, low-level building blocks uh, uh, which you can uh, you can see uh, see here. And if you know those uh, building blocks, you can you can uh, you can build awesome things, such as this one. Uh, but today we usually want to make our uh, our uh, applications uh, much more shiny, you know. So you can build, for example, this one. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's uh, let's back to uh, let's back to the earth. And uh, this is the example of uh, of uh, an application which is uh, 
uh, really, uh, really complex in uh, not only what it can do, but uh, how, how it is uh, written. Uh, and this is its, its, source, its source code. I know it's uh, obfuscated, but uh, basically uh, that's what you see when, uh, when you are uh, editing, uh, uh, editing some pages. Uh, some applications uh, of today, some client-side applications with a lot of styling and a lot of a uh, lot of uh, JavaScript uh, logic. And, and now uh, it comes to to the problems. Those uh, this application development on a web is uh, is uh, really problematic because of inherent uh, complexity. The, the web wasn't built uh, for some huge applications of today uh, to uh, to maintain. Uh, and the web, web basically evolves. We have new standards. We have uh, pretty shiny things like uh, communications uh, um, uh, in a, in a, uh, between windows, uh, communications uh, with server in real time. Uh, but the thing is that markup stays still same. We, we haven't changed markup for years. We did it. We, we, uh, we added some new elements like input date, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, uh, it's basically so, so small that uh, it, uh, it uh, doesn't allow you to write a whole application uh, just with what you have in the, in the platform. So that's why we have frameworks. We are now framework lovers. Every web engineer has uh, one or two or three web frameworks uh, he, uh, he tried. Uh, past uh, one or two years, and uh, he needs to change his framework, uh, his, his uh, uh, the framework of uh, his art, art sorry, uh, uh, each one or two years. And frameworks are pretty good. Then uh, they handle uh, things like uh, templating and uh, model view binding. The uh, two. They are they bind to two layers in a MVC model. Uh, they usually add some kind of abstraction, which helps you to build uh, Gmail can applications. And uh, usually they come with some en encapsulation, so uh, you don't have to uh, the the components doesn't uh, influence uh, each other. So let's uh, take some tour around the uh, frameworks of today. Uh, and uh, we can uh, we can look whether uh, we could uh, actually build uh, uh, the um, next Gmail just from what uh, frameworks we have and we use. So here uh, I wasn't able to read the Gmail source code, but I'm not able to read this one uh, as well. That's XJS from from Sencha, uh, and I haven't I intentionally haven't read it before, so. Uh, let me check what's there. I think somewhere there you are actually printing some date. Can you see that? I can't see that. It's ah here you you, you add some date some and and second date here. Ah oh, that's great. That's awesome. And even better, it's uh, GWWT. It's from uh, Google. Uh, they have uh, they have written a bunch of applications using. Uh, these frameworks, uh, the applications you can see uh, on almost every every corner. Uh, so I think that's a similar situation. Uh, here is a text column with contacts, and it will be probably yeah, it will be cell table. It's uh, it's so obvious. Uh, and here it's actually getting better. Better we we have some markup. Uh, we have namespaces for XML and a bunch of stuff. I don't know what, what it is about. Uh, and here comes jQuery UI. The situation could be better. It's from client side, guys. So uh, here, uh, yeah, we have table. It's good. I like tables. And. Uh, jQuery does the, uh, does love tables as well because uh, the only what you need to, to do for make this table uh, like uh, uh, enable uh, enable filtering and sorting of columns and uh, etc. You just need to use one constructor. You need to like enhance the table when document is ready. I uh, I take my 
I take my table by ID and I make it data table and I can I can add a bunch of parameters here and make it uh, make uh, uh, its behavior like I uh, like I wish. So yeah, this was our our tour. I hope uh, I hope you are scared now what you are doing every, every day and uh, so let's see what what actually frameworks do for us. They, they handle complexity, yeah? They abstract this complexity out. Uh, however, each framework did it own way. So it leads to fragmentation. Each framework does uh, own way uh, for each platform or language. Uh, you, have, uh, you have another, uh, another tools, another principles, another API. It's good, we have a lot of APIs. Uh, and also, I think a lot of lot of framework uh, uh, vendors uh, share the knowledge about how to how to make the uh, web uh, uh, web better, uh, how to improve their uh, own frameworks. And but I think it also needs a lot of a lot of resources. I actually believe it's a tremendous uh, resource wasting to have so many frameworks. So today I will show you just one framework. Uh, no, I'm 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 just kidding. Uh, so uh, you don't have to care, right? It's not your business. Uh, but it it comes to your business when it's time for upgrading your application. And uh, as a as a web developer, as a someone who who. Uh, who inherited some legacy application? You are looking for a reusal of some pieces of, of the application, uh, and you start to look for some uh, some tests. Uh, you probably want a sign. Uh, you you probably want to find some in a, um, in a legacy application. So you are basically screwed. You are locked in in the solution which uh, engineers before you. Uh, design. So it's your favorite step. Let's choose another framework and uh, rewrite the whole application. Ah, great. So I think it's a it's a redheaded way to prevent uh, prevent uh, locking. So we should think at this point a little bit and maybe return back to. Uh, to the roots, where where that happen? I think the the web was really great when it it was just about just about elements for uh, view uh, view declarations. And so my goal of today is let's componentize the web, let's make it much more like. This one. We already have components. We have HTML5, which added some some nice uh, element addition like progress bar and date. They are ni nicely. Uh, uh, they are basically uh, made just for the pl platform you are using. So it doesn't depend whether you are on uh, mobile or uh, desktop browser they will they will actually uh, adapt to the to the device as much as uh, they can but still when we want to build something more we end with uh, some hell something which I call uh, div hell uh, this is the sample of bootstrap framework it's very favorite today a lot of engineers I'm sure a lot of in engineers uh, use bootstrap uh, here, let's raise your, raise your hand if, if you do. Uh, nice. Not, not, so, not so many guys, but some of you use Bootstrap. You will get to that point. It's scary a little bit. Uh, and if you want to add some more uh, semantics, then uh, you, you actually write JavaScript or any other language which compiles to JavaScript or you can write on server. It doesn't matter. Uh, but basically, what do you have? You have a lot of divs uh, to build uh, some panel. So, so basic functionality. It's a panel. Panels are everywhere in this uh, in this world. But this is the way how, how we write panel. I'm I'm really sad. And 
that's uh, that's how we make our uh, our diffs to to do something useful. Like uh, it shouldn't be diff; it should be input. Sorry. Uh, so we have suggestion box uh, which you. Uh, just enhance to to do under completion, and you hard code some some options. Uh, let's think about how it would evolve if you would write the Gmail kind kind, kind of application. You would have a lot of bunch of diffs and bunch of JavaScript code. It's uh, it's not something I I would like to uh, maintain. And uh, that's not the worst thing. That's pretty, pretty scary. But uh, the problem comes also with uh, uh, encapsulation. Uh, the problem is uh, when you are uh, living in an open source world, you are uh, adopting a lot of, uh, you are adopting a lot of uh, open source libraries, and uh, they don't work with each other. One version will work with another, but not with another one. And uh, they are namespace, but sometimes they collide because uh, because of um, some bugs or uh, the CSS style sheets. Uh, collide with e each other and so on. So I say no to hacking around the platform. It, it doesn't make sense. We did it for uh, 20 years now, and uh, I want to uh, stop it. So, hey web, it's uh, uh, 2014, and we should we should be better now. And this is uh, actually. Something what web comp uh, components uh, uh, can do for us. Web components allow us to extend vocabulary of HTML. It's it's so simple. Uh, it's so simple. I I probably should uh, show just on one slide, but uh, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, speak a lot. So uh, here is uh, here is what are our uh, web components. Web components allow us to extend uh, the vocabulary. So we can have panel with header with some, and, um, and uh, the panel where we have some, uh, some uh, head with, uh, with icon. Uh, isn't it better than it was in, in the case of uh, bootstrap, uh, uh, bootstrap uh, markup, the bunch of divs? Or here, autocomplete. We have autocomplete and uh, some suggestion box. Uh, where we say here we have autocomplete and we delegate to some controller uh, with, uh, uh, with the property called array. Uh, we doesn't care uh, from where it uh, comes from. Uh, we just know what we have on the page. That's uh, like Zen of, Zen of uh, web, uh, web development, you know? Or even better, we have, we have table. We have table where we define it sortable, filterable, selectable, and we don't care about uh, who will actually make the, our table uh, behave uh, a, a, as we want. It's a tag who was prepared by someone, and uh, you, can, uh, you can freely use it uh, if you want to have uh, some interactive uh, uh, table, you know? But this is not as simple. Uh, I will show you what uh, these uh, web components actually are composed from. Uh, they have many, uh, many things. Just, uh, just to know what you uh, you can uh, see around uh, uh, this year and uh, years uh, years after. So let's start. Yeah, let's start and dive into uh, into those. Uh, at first, uh, we have we have templates. Template is great stuff. Uh, we like templating. Uh, who who actually uh, ever touched some templating engine like? Facelets or PHP, I, I don't know how it's called. Uh, so I think almost everyone here. Uh, we love templates, but templates here doesn't, uh, they actually can't uh, do much. Uh, template, new ten, uh, template element is just about en encapsulating uh, the, the DOM. Uh, basically, when browser parses this, uh, this uh, markup, uh, it knows here is template, and uh, uh, he parses the DOM. But he doesn't interpret it. It's just inert DOM, which uh, it uh, it doesn't behave uh, uh, anyhow. The template is hidden, 
is hidden, including its, uh, uh, its whole uh, content. And uh, the time for interpreting this is actually uh, accessing the contents of the template and uh, copying that or cloning that to the, uh, to the DOM, which can, which can uh, interpret it. But, you know, it's not the templating you, you, wish, you wish to do. Uh, so uh, here are the ways how to how you can actually uh, make um, how you can actually uh, interpret the the templates. Uh, so probably the best thing here uh, are custom templates. Uh, oh, sorry, custom elements. Uh, in custom elements, you can just uh, say I have element with some name. Uh, and here I have this template, which isn't interpreted yet, but once, on, once I use the element with this name, uh, it will actually use this, uh, uh, this template and copy it uh, into, the, uh, into the DOM. And here, here is the public API, as suggested by, uh, by the W3C specification. Uh, there are also some callbacks for instantiation and so on. So uh, everything, what uh, what do you need to do to to make uh, make those things uh, uh, happen? And then you have decorators. Decorators is another way uh, for uh, for using templates. But uh, decorators are like uh, dump dump interpreters uh, because uh, they uh, they uh, don't usually uh, they don't contain. Uh, some script to make make that uh, make the element behave. Uh, you can basically uh, in a CSS style sheets you can uh, define the selectors uh, which you want to enhance with some decorator. And uh, it says that the details tag with state open here uh, will be interpreted by decorator with uh, um, on this uh, coordinates. Uh, so basically, here where you have content, uh, you will select the summary, which is here, and then you will insert the rest of the rest of the content. So basically, the idea of uh, these details is changing uh, between close and open state, where you have uh, just summary, and uh, you you either insert a content or not, depending on what what uh, state the, the tag is in, or uh, the, the element is in. Uh, decorators, but uh, unfortunately, uh, decorators uh, doesn't make it to, to uh, this draft of the specification. There is some, they, they can actually uh, make, it, uh, make it later. And in order to avoid some, some Creepy things like uh, like uh, importing uh, those templates in uh, JavaScript or um, yeah, in, basically in JavaScript, uh, we have new uh, new way to to importing HTML from external sources. Here we have uh, use of my own uh, auto completion tag. Uh, it's it's enough to to import it from somewhere. It doesn't matter, and here we use it, and uh, everything will be uh, interpreted for us. Uh, how can how can our uh, auto completion tag look like? Uh, here we have the element with the name, and we see that it depends on another uh, on another uh, element, which is input field, uh, which we use here. Uh, and rest is, rest is just implementation detail. Just uh, one more thing about the templates. If we, uh, as I said, that he, uh, here was the template, uh, and here we use script uh, and an image. Those uh, those resources won't be actually uh, interpreted or even downloaded before uh, this uh, this tag is uh, used in a in a page. So what do you need to do to extend your, voc uh, your vocabulary of HTML? You just need to import and use. That's it. That's the, that's the web, how it should behave every time. Uh, I have one more um, idea here. I would actually, I don't like uh, you need to import uh, every element you intend to use. 
I would like to rather have some registry of of elements uh, where you, you just use elements on a on a page, and when it, when the browser comes to the element, it doesn't know. It will just download uh, the the appropriate uh, the appropriate um, uh, source, the HTML source. And the last thing which makes this thing happen is uh, Shadow DOM. Uh, Shadow DOM is actually the way how we can encapsulate our uh, our elements, so they won't interact with, uh, with each other in in bad way. Uh, they won't collide with each other. Basically, here we have document tree uh, as we uh, as we know it. We have uh, uh, we have elements with uh, with childs, and uh, here you can see a shadow host. It's basically the the element uh, itself. And the element itself, when it uh, uh, when uh, you apply some, when you apply the, um, um, when you use it as a shadow root, you can actually replace it with another uh, bunch of elements with some uh, another structure. So basically, the element here, the element here becomes another uh, another element. And uh, the important thing is around this uh, around this. Um, Mm, shadow structure, the structure we can't see, uh, there, is, the, there is a boundary where uh, style sheets doesn't, uh, doesn't, actually, mm, uh, doesn't actually collide with the rest of the DOM. So the structure here can be uh, completely self, uh, self, I don't know, uh, they can live at uh, at own, and also another thing is that the DOM events. If you call, uh, if some event uh, is created here, it uh, it goes uh, uh, top uh, to the top of the tree. Uh, but uh, here on the boundary, it's translated, so uh, the users of this DOM won't actually know uh, that uh, there are some elements. They will just know uh, that uh, it's one element interpreted here under the shadow host which uh, which uh, um, is the which is the element which we uh, um, interact with so once interpreted once once render it the shadow ho the shadow host actually becomes the shadow root and here is the shadow tree which we normally can can think uh, can uh, can see uh, but we can uh, access it using the uh, debugging tools uh, if uh, we want. So basically, that's it. That's uh, web components. Uh, the great thing about them that you are already expert. You have written HTML once, uh, and uh, the the web is now uh, now better with uh, extended HTML uh, vocabulary and uh, the right uh, encapsulation. But the thing is, can I actually use this today? Uh, here is nice uh, nice table, uh, which you can find on, on, on the internet where, uh, where the, uh, the standard and its impl implementation stays. So uh, the specification is actually completed. Uh, it's almost explained. It's strange that it's it's it isn't, uh, it's spec'd, but it isn't explained. Uh, don't ask me why. However, here is uh, uh, here is the implementation between browsers. You have Chrome, which implements templates and uh, Shadow DOM. Uh, you have Firefox, uh, which also have templates. Uh, and uh, in in Chrome, you can you can basically enable HTML imports by using a flag. Uh, if you access about about colon uh, flex in Chrome, you can enable HTML imports and custom elements are under development. In Firefox, uh, the the bug is already uh, is uh, already accepted and once it will it will probably be uh, implemented. And but Safari and Internet Explorer doesn't doesn't care so far. That's a uh, you know that's how it usually is with those those two. Uh, but 
good news is that you can use, use it today, and uh, you can use it. Uh, you can leverage the technique which is called uh, which is called uh, polyfills. Uh, you can use polyfill for a uh, lot of different a uh, lot of different specifications, uh, and basically those spill, uh, polyfills make sure that on uh, every supported br browser you will get the uh, the API uh, you you expect, and uh, you just need to import some some more uh, JavaScript to uh, to make that happen. So basically, polyfills, as you can see, the polyfills uh, now uh, works on every major uh, thing uh, out, out there. We have even two uh, vendors of polyfills. One's our Polymer project, uh, another is Mozilla's Xtex. Which are the which are the subjects which uh, cooperate uh, on this uh, on this uh, uh, specification, and uh, here you can access the Polymer page to uh, to learn uh, more about uh, about uh, how it uh, how it works and uh, about the progress uh, and so on. Uh, they have this nice explanation how uh, how thing works. So uh, you basically have platform JS, which is uh, JavaScript compiled for a lot of polyfills, uh, which uh, uh, which are necessary to make uh, the the uh, web components work. And uh, basically, they detect whether your uh, uh, your uh, browser is already capable to uh, to use uh, native implementation, and if yes, they, uh, the the polyfill won't won't be applied. Uh, so it's a nice uh, uh, it's a nice approach. And uh, basically, on the platform there is Polymer uh, built, uh, and it's a it's a core of the f uh, framework which you can. Uh, use right now for effective uh, creating of uh, polymers, which should be able later uh, cooperate with uh, uh, rest of the platform once uh, once uh, the specification will be completed and will get to the uh, point the browsers will uh, widely widely use it. So it's uh, demo time. Uh, it will be a very quick demo. Uh, I will show you what you can here use. Uh, we will use uh, Eoman, which is basically Yo. Uh, it's a scaffolding tool where we want to uh, generate Polymer app, and we don't want to use. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't. Huh. I shouldn't use my root right. Talk once more, and it uses other tools like uh, Bover for uh, client side uh, like browser dependencies uh, of JavaScript, and uh, it uses Grunt for build. Uh, I hope you see that. Uh, and here uh, we have generated application, so I will just serve it to my. Uh, to my browser uh, here. Um, and here we have application. It's very, very simple, but uh, it shows what uh, it can do. Here you have some uh, um, binding between the, uh, between the um, DOM uh, DOM output and uh, the the input uh, element. Uh, you can you can you could already see that in uh, in frameworks like uh, Angular JS. But uh, more importantly, I will I will show you uh, what uh, is it about. I just need to do this stuff. Uh, so ba basically, what was generated here is the application uh, index HTML. Where you uh, lo uh, where you load in the the platform JS, which is uh, the the polyfill for web components, and then you uh, import two elements. Uh, can you see that at least somehow? Uh, and 
here we use two custom elements. One is Polymer Greeting, and second is Polymer List. So let's see what are those elements about. Uh, we have Greetings. Greeting uh, is uh, about using model view binding here uh, for two, two bindings. And uh, here we have input, which we use uh, for uh, for input of this uh, of this greeting uh, value, uh, so we have polymer element, which is uh, the way how we can uh, how we can define elements right now. It's just prefix with polymer, uh, and uh, here we need to basically we need to import this element first, uh, just to just to use it. Uh, so we have custom element which is uh, called uh, polymer greeting. It's used here. And inside here, we have some script. Uh, there is a constructor uh, of the, of the uh, element. And it says that Polymer greeting will have one attribute called greeting. And its de default value will be uh, hello. I don't know. Uh, so let's, let's change it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, we have we have declarative we have declarative uh, uh, views. Uh, for example, here we in a in a ready callback we load something. For example, uh, the the array of items. It can be from some RESTful API, and here is a is an extension of a uh, it's an extension of a, a Polymer framework where we can use uh, iteration over this uh, items attribute. Or uh, it's not attribute. It's a, it's a uh, inner, uh, it's a local variable. And uh, you just print uh, every, every item. And you can see it's, uh, it's here. I can change it. I can, I can. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so we can we, we can return later to to this application. Let me just uh, continue with the presentation. So that's Polymer. We have seen Yeoman, uh, which is a great tool for sc uh, scaffolding uh, the uh, client side only applications. We have Polymer as a polyfill for uh, uh, web components. Uh, uh, specification. We have uh, model view something. Uh, that's a uh, that's a binding between the between the view layer and the model of the uh, application. And uh, if uh, you have if you if you would like to touch some uh, elements already, you can uh, go to customelements.io, uh, where uh, you will see the the database of uh, like uh, uh, ninety. Uh, 90 elements uh, or 80 elements which uh, have been already built. Uh, there are elements like uh, Facebook button or GitHub button, some useful stuff, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is that now you can just use uh, use one element to make, for example, those those widgets happen in uh, very very easily, basically. And the idea I I have is that once we will have a lot of frameworks which will do amazing things, but we won't reinvent the the view layer again because it was already uh, it's already here. It was here for 20 years now, and we just need to make it uh, make it better. If you want to know more about this stuff, let's go to Web Components GitHub I/O. Uh, which will be once on webcomponents.org. It's uh, in works right now. Uh, and let's experience the future. That's it. Do you have some, uh, some questions? Yeah. Lukash? Sure. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, the question is whether there are some notion of uh, dependencies between components. Basically, if you import one, uh, one component, uh, you can define uh, on, on very top of the uh, imported HTML that you want to import another HTML. Uh, Yeah, uh, that's basically up to the developer. I think there will be some nice uh, framework around it which will make it happen. Uh, it's not part of the uh, platform, but basically it's up to you uh, to manage dependencies. The good thing is that uh, they, are, they are declarative, uh, and also they, uh, uh, there is the, uh, something like uh, optimizer uh, for, for imports because On a web, you don't want to uh, you don't want to load a lot of uh, HTML files at once. Uh, sorry, uh, um, uh, once after each other, uh, you want all all at once. And uh, there is a tool called Vul Vulcanizer, which can take uh, all your used <coughs> HTML um, uh, HTML imported HTML elements, and uh, it will create one. Uh, one HTML um, optimized and ag aggregated uh, resource which you can load in your uh, application. Yep. Uh, how hard is it uh, to take existing components and extend it? I mean, I don't think change one particular yeah. Uh, Lukáš asked whether it's, uh, it's possible to uh, extend the component uh, somehow, uh, if there is some notion. Yes, there is a notion of, uh, as, you see, uh, as you've seen the templates and the content element, which is for inserting. Uh, you can use also shadow element I haven't talked about. And this shadow element says that uh, I, will use the, the, I will use the component which I have wrapped which I have extended. Uh, here is also a notion of inserting content of the, uh, of the, of the element. It's the content element. And here is notion of extending <coughs> elements. Uh, Polymer also makes sure that, you, uh, that if you uh, use the element extends tag, you can just uh, tell what uh, element you are extending, and it will basically uh, Uh, extend from the JavaScript uh, point of view and uh, and the uh, behavior point of view. So let's read Polymer. Polymer. Yes, another question. Like a uh, declarative model view binding? <coughs> like declaring custom elements? Wow. Uh, the question is that uh, there is written on a Mozilla, Mozilla mailing list that, uh, that custom elements were dropped from web components. I have, I have read uh, through the latest draft, and uh, custom elements are there. Basically, everything except decorators are there, so uh, I'm not sure about uh, web elements. Maybe it's a way uh, to, uh, to uh, we, can, we can discuss that later. If yeah. Because we are running out of the time, so yeah. again, other questions at the moment. Let's let's meet me and thank you. Ještě jednu sešnu hned tady poté, že jo? Ve 12.10. Uh,